This is a map of the United States. In particular, this region, the shaded region, which is in red, is New England. New England consists of six states, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. In the history of the state, in the history of the region, ever since the past 60 years, New England has been very solid for the Democrats, as you can see by these electoral maps. Going back even more, you can see it's still very solid, with the exception of 2000, but even then, that was only the state of New Hampshire. Now, let's go back even more, and you can see around the 1980s, this region has become a lot more Republican, but mostly the entire country was voting for Republicans at this point, and keep in mind that the New England region, especially in these past three elections, was a lot more uh, democratic than the entire country on average. And in this electoral map, you saw the states of Massachusetts and Rhode Island voting for the Democrats, but the more upper region of New England voting for the Republicans. So what is happening? All right, let's go back here. This is the election of 1880. As you can see by this map, pretty much every state south of the Mason-Dixon line, with the exception of New Jersey, uh, California, and Nevada, voted for the um, Republican candidate, James Garfield. Every state outside of the Mason-Dixon line except for these three. And the New England region was still very solid for the Republican James Garfield. So how did the map go from this to these? So if you want to learn that, find out right now. Many people like to talk about how the party switch happened in the South. But nobody really talks about the party switch in the North with the New England region going from being solidly Republican to solidly Democrat. This process took a very long time, and to fully um, understand it, let's look at some history. Around the early periods, you saw when New England first became a part of the U uh, when New England was settled heavily by Puritans and Quakers, and these people very heavily opposed the institution of slavery in the South, and once the Republican Party emerged in the 1850s, the Republican Party was a party that was dedicated to stopping the expansion of slavery, and some more radical Republicans favored abolishing slavery altogether, so naturally the party was popular with the anti-slavery Puritans and Quakers in the New England region, as well as the fact that tariffs were quite popular in the region, and Republicans had supported tariffs. Same with the gold standard. And many, um, and then when you go back to, and then as time went on, though, more Irish Americans began to immigrate into, began to immigrate into the New England region of the U.S. in particular. And these Irish Americans were often Catholic, and Catholics and Irish people were the um, were a major demographic group of the Democratic Party, which led to the state of New York and Massachusetts in particular becoming more and more democratic. Most of the, um, and as time went on also, Democrats also had begun to become, uh, soften their stance on, uh, civil rights in particular, and many Democrats, such as Harry Truman, also began supporting civil rights reforms, and by the time you got to the 18, 1950s, you had John F. Kennedy get elected senator for the state of Massachusetts. So, and you had this electoral map over here with Nixon winning the upper region of New England and Kennedy winning the lower region. And then you got to the election of 1964 with this guy, Barry Goldwater, running. Barry Goldwater was a staunch conservative. Much of the, and he even said stuff like the entire Northeastern Bloc should be cut out of the United States, which, pretty, uh, which obviously angered a lot of people. And Lyndon Johnson, the Democratic nominee, was able to portray Goldwater as a warmonger, and this made the entire Northeastern region vote for the Democrat, Lyndon Johnson, quite heavily. And then you go to the election of 1968, and you see that New England still is voting for the Democratic candidate, Hubert Humphrey. So how did this shift happen? Well, you can pretty much say that it happened because of all these Irish immigrants who were coming from Europe and going into the New England region. And... Also, the Democrats had begun to support more progressive, uh, they had also developed a progressive platform, which had developed, which, um, yeah, they had become more and more progressive, and this progressive platform consisted mainly of 
stuff like ending poverty and more social justice, which was popular in the more liberal areas such as Massachusetts and Rhode Island. But nevertheless, the states of the state of Vermont is still very consistent for the Republicans. In all of, and even if you go back to this map over here, you can see in all of these elections Vermont is voting for the Republican. So how did Vermont shift? Well, it's probably due to the fact that Vermont has become, and especially the New England region in particular, is very secular, and it's quite irreligious, at least if you compare it to the rest of the country. And Vermont is also a state where, and also not to mention many liberals from New York are moving heavily into Vermont, as well as the fact that there's a lot of poverty in that area, and that's why many people there favor social justice. And that even caused them to elect this guy, Bernie Sanders. But generally speaking, the states of New Hampshire is very libertarian leaning, but the rest of the New England region is very democratic. And probably the reason why you could explain it is because of the fact that over time, it's probably due to the Irish immigrants coming into the state, as well as the fact that the um, Democrats began to become more and more progressive and the Republican Party was dominated by Southern Evangelical Conservatives, which is generally the reason why the Democrats, and the Democrats have also begun to favor secular, secularism and more and more social justice reforms, which is the reason why the New England region has become so liberal or democratic in these days. But nevertheless, the New England region has still is not above electing Republicans entirely. They've elected, they right now, the New England region has three Republicans in charge of it. You have in Massachusetts, you have uh, Charlie Baker. In New Hampshire, you have Chris Sununu, and in Vermont, you have um, Phil Scott. But generally, in presidential elections, you can pretty much expect how the region will go, with the exception of New Hampshire. And generally speaking, though, that is why this the New England region has gone from being very. Uh, from being very right, uh, not right wing necessarily, but very Republican to very Democratic. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe. And bye.